Yo, what's going on guys? Poppy Top is crazy right now. The recent buffs to Sunfire Aegis and the other tank mythics have pushed her over the top along with buffs to other tank style items where her most picked build right now using Sunfire Aegis has a 77% win rate. Pretty nuts. I'm going to be showing you guys how to play her and what this build looks like. So I hope you guys enjoy. We only got 25 gold. We can't buy anything and we only get 6 XP which shouldn't actually change anything. So... Not a big deal. It's going to suck for them. MF getting the ball rolling early. Your worst matchups on Poppy are usually going to be Scion and Nasus. Champions who can run double sustain things such as second win plus D shield or second win plus corruption are pretty annoying. You can't whittle them down. Poppy mainly relies on whittling enemies with her Q range and with her passive increased auto attack range as well. So... That is how you're gonna chip away at people for the most part. I don't wanna deal with Shake. I'm gonna get down an early ward. Don't wanna deal with any shenanigans. We'll hit him with an early passive hit. We'll walk right into it, turn on corruption, and trade him down to the death. We have ignite advantage, so. Alright. I was actually decent by him, but. We're still in the lead off that trade. We also have corruption advantage, so when we trade HP for HP, it's good for us. We should hit level two first, since we have more minions. Mordecai's or Q does less damage if it hits multiple targets, so since there's a minion there, I only took really half damage. Just need one more minion for my level two. I want my passive off on him he's not gonna let me get it though the minions are split can't get them all there it is what it is I'm gonna bash this guy with our passive there we go i'll attack nearly got him with the q as well try to juke the pull couldn't quite cut it there now he's gonna get hit by passive grasp get the eq ignite we'll go ahead and uh just walk out with a biscuit on and our w poppy has extremely high kill potential when the enemies are playing underneath turret since you can simply bash them with your e i have to back off i don't know where shaco is he could be around here right about now so we need to back off right about there. We have flash, we should be able to lift. He's gonna have to hit us with an auto. He can't kill us with just an E ignite. We're too tanky for that. Taking ignite on pop gives you a lot of kill potential. If you take teleport, you miss out on a lot of uh, kill opportunities. We'll go ahead, grab Negatron and boots. Since Mordekai does magic damage and Shaco E's magic damage. Plus they have Magic damage mid lane, magic damage Swain. Their only true physical damage champion is Kaisa. If Shaco goes AD, then he'll be a true physical as well. So, that going some early magic resist here strong, plus boots is going to be really good for Mord, hitting him with our passives, our passive autos and Qs. Remember, your passive does apply grasp and all other on hit effects. So, you can continuously hit him with those grasps. We're going to we'll walk away, his passives up. We could flash on him here. Maybe get him into the wall. We'd like to get a bit more damage on him first. My minions are aggroing. Really weird. They're just focusing down his cannon minion. He's being forced to pretty much max range farm. Which isn't really ideal for him. Auto attack Q. We're going to try to body block him. We picked up our thing, so the turret shot didn't even really hurt us there. We picked up our passive right as it was about to hit us. Nice and nice. We'll go ahead and dump the wave. Poppy Q is a massive hitbox. It even starts from her on top of herself. So if someone's on top of you or slightly behind you, you can even hit them with a Q. Auto attack Q. We didn't quite get him into the wall. We can kill him with our next setup, though. He's dead unless Jaco comes. He knows that, too. Auto attack Q. 
E auto Q, maximize your damage. I'm gonna move bushes here. Back in this bush, we can flash into this one if we need to. Oh, okay, there's Shaker. He's not gonna get here in time though. He's on level four, he's pretty far behind. He does have some kills though. I guess he's not far behind for jungle. Top lane's supposed to be higher level than jungle. Now we'll grab our double ruby, head back top side. Poppy's in such a good spot. You can pretty much blind pick her. Like I said, her only two matchups that are pretty unplayable is Scion Nasus. Her other challenging matchups, as long as you're playing smart, you'll do just fine and outscale them. Just the Scion Nasus are pretty unplayable. You like you can still beat it, but it's just so much work that if you do first pick Poppy and they pick it, I'd probably just dodge. We're about to hit level six. That Q is annoying. I'm trying to slow down the wave. He doesn't want me to. He has an HP advantage and a huge minion advantage here. Oh, he's six. I think I back towards my turret. Get him with a Q. He's pretty tough now. He's on a really good power spike. Being level six, he can threaten and all in. He walks, yeah, he didn't quite walk into it. Vigo's looking for the gank. Vigo's only level five though, so it's kind of uh, risky to say the least. Nice and nice, got it. Yeah, we can't, he has more HP. He's 900 HP, we're 700 HP right now, so we have to whittle him down with passives and just play it slower. Since you do have the range option on your passive every time it's up and on your Qs. Especially against these melee matchups, you can slow the game down if you need to. You don't get yourself killed. I'm going to dodge that with my W, otherwise it was going to hit me. Push him off that minion, make him eat a Q for it. I kind of have to back if we can't get more damage on him than this. Because he's, he's starting to play pretty uh pretty decent spacing to where we're not able to easily hit him with everything right now he started to gauge in a bit on our uh hit him with our ignite he's dead if you can get behind him just shove him into the wall it's easy to get behind him when you have your w on for the mobility also we have boots advantage over him you should be looking out for that if you're faster than them you have more options with stunning them into walls and ultimately that's how you're going to maximize your damage because both sides of your Q will land the initial and then the secondary explosion, which they both do equal damage. Go ahead and reset. It'd be greedy to stay. We're sitting on a lot of gold. We're missing a lot of health and mana. Jacob comes. He could potentially kill us solo. Bomb is get Aegis and we'll grab control ward. Against the vast majority of matchups, you'll build up a lead even without killing them simply because Poppy utilizes corruption so efficiently since once again, her Q is, is basically a ranged attack and then she can poke with her passive. It's hard for many champions to match that self-sustain to where if they don't start corruption or if they're champion that can't really take it, they have to keep buying potions or then they have to invest into a late refill, which is relatively low value to get after your second back. So start to get a very nice item advantage we'll chip away at him he has minion advantage here so even though we're quite a bit more gold fed than he is we need to take our time no need to force it the wave's already coming to us bait that out and then we'll back back him down with passives you can see your passive coming back up in the corner keep a close eye on it it also makes a sound and a visual effect like you see there shines bright gold when it's back up so then we top laners paying attention or if you don't like looking at at the timer then it's an easy way to know when it's back up i think looking at the timer is best because you can set up your positioning to where it's up in a second or two and then you can easily land it because you knew ahead of time rather than reacting to it being up so we're pushing him off the wave grasp is up i step back into the wave and um my balmy cinder wasn't activated there because I hadn't done damage or taken damage recently. But normally your balmy cinder will stall your grasp so you can still use it. Because that's what's happening right now. Look at my grasp. 
I'm not hitting anything and it's resetting it constantly. You have to either be taking damage or doing damage. Auto attack Q for your grasp to uh, stay active. Otherwise, it'll you'll have to build it back up. My wave's going to push into him. If he gets aggressive, that means Shake goes here. So I need to just keep whittling him down. Don't overcommit. And come on, baby. Got it. <laughs> Bomb me's OP. Got him with that grasp. Let's go. We're going to step up off our shield and hit him with a Q. It's very nice for us. We need to poke, push that in. Mm, I actually kind of want to keep my passive up because it's easier to hit him with that. So I'll last hit that mini with Q. Then we can find the grasp auto here. Don't know where Shake goes, so I'm not going to overcommit. Plus, he's underneath his turret, so. And you can keep eating on those. We're building up a nice little CS lead. Shake goes bot side. I'll just keep shoving. He'll miss CS underneath turret, and I can keep poking him with Qs and passive. Oh, we missed cannon. Tragic. I really want that play. I don't, <laughs> I don't want him to get cannon. He's gonna, oh, I think he actually ended up missing it. That's hilarious. We'll pop a corruption, keep our grasp up. Got him with the grasp, move sideways. And we'll just sustain back up here. Nice. Go back in for the grasp auto, run away. Oh, turret actually pinched off a shot. I didn't time it the best. Trying to bait out some of his abilities. We'll look for a ward here. When you're playing Poppy without TP, you don't want to roam too much. When you're play her, playing her with Ignite, it's more about just proper laning, not dying to ganks. Cancel that auto, sidestepped. Then we can hit him with it after. No reason to take damage for free. Poppy's also a really good jungler, so if you ban out a jungle champion like Fiddlesticks or Viego, you can make them think it's Poppy Jungle if you're worried about them picking Scion or Nasus. Sidestep that, pick up my passive. I'm just going to go ahead and reset. I'm sitting on a lot of gold. It's, it's getting wasted a little bit. Ah, oh, rip. Yeah, I'm just going to reset. There's too many of them missing, and like I said, I'm sitting on a lot of gold. We could slowly keep poking him down, yes, but the mana and health we're missing makes this all more risky. You can back at Sunfire. Against their team, I'm actually feeling the Merc Treads. I think Merc Treads is really good versus their team. Since they're triple magic damage with the Swain, more Shaco. I Wait, yeah, four... Triple magic damage and a little bit from Kaisa and Shaco as well. So the Mord, Swain, Victor, mainly magic damage, and then the Kaisa, Shaco are mostly physical. Merc Treads will be nice against the Swain Snare and uh, Victor Stun. I don't think it actually helps against Mord R. Go ahead and shove this out. Nice. Try to get a ward over here. So we have control. We might be able to proxy him off this wave. Yeah. He just can't stay and fight us. He's gonna walk past. And we can easily just take everything. Oh, this is warded, what the heck? Don't mind if I do. This turret's gonna take damage since my minions are focusing it, obviously. Is there somebody over here? Wow, I'm seeing things. I, <laughs> there's nobody there. Shaco's bot side, we're safe to do this. He can't really chase me, we're faster. We have tier two boots, he only has tier one boots, so. I'm gonna keep up my grasp off this minion. Oh yeah, he's just proxying the wave now too. I guess that's fine. 
it is what it is. I am putting myself at more risk than he's putting himself though from doing this. Auto attack Q. Yeah, I think I win this really hard. I'll just kill him with my next E. W him down. Go ahead him with a QR. And down he goes. You Q first and then your R holds them inside of your Q. Just like we did there. That was really unfortunate. We weren't quite able to pinch. His box is just wrecking. Ooh, what am I doing? All right, we got his flash at least. I wasn't paying attention to mid at all. I wanted to see if I could kill Shaco and it's just bad. That was really greedy of me. We'll go ahead and get Force of Nature next. I don't think we really need Thornmel right now. They don't have that much self healing. So even though Thornmel is generally what you'd get next item, it would be kind of pointless this game, so force of nature it is. Divine Sunder isn't bad on Poppy, but it's not quite worth it right now. You're not you're not nearly as tanky. You're missing 150 health. You're also missing out on the armor magic resist that Sunfire gives, so it's not quite worth. I think it's also, yeah, it's a little bit more expensive too. And Poppy has so much base damage on her Q. 16% of their max health if you land both sides of it, plus its base damage. Absolutely chunks. Just staying alive on her is the most important thing. Rather than having more initial burst. What is this guy doing? I think they're actually... The enemies are winning right now. I need to shove top. Mord's going to go the long way around. I should be able to get this underneath his turret and maybe take it. Auto attack Q. Oh, uh, I went the like this super, super long way around. I just kind of have to stay with my wave now. I can put more pressure on him with my Qs if I do that. Just like that. And I can hit him with my passive. Pick that up while I'm at it. I want a gra I want these grass so I can keep scaling comfortably. Taking way too many turret shots though. There's no way he's actually gonna reset. Yeah, he's just trolling. Poppy's incredibly difficult to hit, especially when she's this fast. She's got a tiny hitbox. Almost all the damage we were taking is just from the turret. Yeah, eat on that more. He almost landed that one. Almost. Give me that grasp. Thank you very much. I gotta go rotate. Victor's playing super aggro. This Viego went a very, uh, that build is very, uh, boomer bust. I got my Q down. I didn't get my R down. E auto attack because I don't have R up right now. Mord still isn't full item. I'm not too scared of him. We also have really high CS, so. We're in a really good spot right now. Only way we lose this game is if. I just start throwing, diving underneath turrets. Really bad dives. I don't think they have a great way of killing me. We also have big MF I was Not a big fan of Leandre's on MF. I think that item is extremely underwhelming on her. Uh, good luck. Yeah, like I said, it's really hard for Mord to kill Poppy, even if he R's you. You can arm him away, he's gotta walk all the way back to you. 
not a great situation for him. Poppy also plays better with Dead Man's Force of Nature than Mord, so generally you'll... Oh, that's not good. That's a bit of an oof. Should have moved another bush over. Very, very unfortunate. At this point, we could go for Thornmel. Get a little bit of Hilka. It'd be good against Shaco as well. We'll go ahead and pick up Thornmel and the Dead Mans. We'll round off our build with a Randuin. It's about time to team fight. We got his turret. There's no reason for us to stay in lane. If we go back there, it's just to defend our own at this point, which is probably the move. So when our team's trying to surrender, it's super, super winnable though. Even if Katarina's down an insane amount of CS. He's gonna get free turret. I don't think we've gotten a single, single gank against this guy. To be fair, we didn't need it though. He's gotten a few from Shaco, but they've been weird ganks. Shaco just kind of comes when I'm super low. I don't think Shaco's an actual issue. Just gotta kite this guy out. I'm faster than him. I'm wasting both of their time and they're not even really winning this fight. Yeah, that's the fake one. I'll attack Q. Oh, hey, Shaco. I see you, buddy. God, I should have got him over the wall with that. Yeah, I killed him with passive. Solid. Nice, nice, nice. All of your moves go, can go over walls on Poppy. Your Q, your E, your R. Even like your W circle, technically. Knock them out of their dashes. They don't have anyone where I can knock their dashes except for Kaisa R on their team. Shaco Q is a blink. Uh, Swain's really scared. He's staying super far away from his turret. You can definitely kill him though if he just actually tries to defend his turret. Like that. He had one misstep no one on my team is really following though i thought that my teammates were closer than that mm. yeah we can't really stay for swain but team's gonna get dragon off this swain's a big team fighter he can't really solo though not a strong champion like poppy very easily especially when i magic resist stack we get a grasp that's a more permanent hp for us We've applied grass 37 times, increases your max health by five. So nearly 200 free permanent HP from the grass. We'll go ahead and Q arm. He to hold him still, E Kaisa into the wall. Q W. Oh my God, that damage is so high. Holy crap. Just tanking everything. Nutty in the buddy. Oh, not like this. <laughs> we might actually lose. I think they built better items as a team. Big out, big R out of MF. Burn damage, Delta enemy champion, 1675. That's, that is actually pretty high. That's decent. All right, that is decent. A little better than I thought it'd be. Go ahead and go for that thorn mill now. We're taking almost all magic damage. Our win con's probably drag, so that's probably their win con. I think Lethality Viego's okay, but you don't really want to do it when they have a really good front line. Like Mord, Shaco R, and Swain Hourglasses are going to be really hard for Lethality Viego to get through. We gotta check for Baron. They're not on it. So we go for Mord. Definitely solo. I'm just kite him around with Qs and, and passives. If we just stand still and trade auto for auto, we'll probably lose because of his passives, max health damage. Nice try. His teammates are most likely gonna come back him up over here. Yeah. Just keep kiting out with Qs. 
we need to pick up that little buckler, but they didn't let me. Auto attack Q. Get her with a Q-tipper into a grass auto. We need to get this guy into the wall. Got him into the wall. Not getting much follow-up though. So we're tanking turret. I don't know how Karma ended up there. That's kind of funny. Now we just walk away with corruption zone. Oh, she got absolutely annihilated. Shaco's tearing me up. He's yeah. He oh, he has armor pen. He's doing a lot of damage with that. It's a bit of a struggle. It's a lot of penetration. Thornmel, we get dead man's next. Starting to die a lot. It is what it is. We're the only tank on our team. I have a feeling we're gonna have the most damage taken in the game by a lot. Oh man. We really need MF in these team fights with her R's. Her R is the only thing that's gonna be able to stabilize us against all the AoE they have, I think. Go ahead, pick up blue ward so we can check if they're trying to do barons and stuff. We're really strong against Kaisa. She doesn't have any life still. We're faster than her. We can solo her. We can really solo any of them, except for maybe Shaco, but with this thorn melt, I think we can. It's pretty squishy. Katarina's trying to solo Victor. I think that's going to turn out really well for her. Who would have guessed that the three full item Victor would be a one full item Kata? That's just shocking. Shaco's three full and three item and a half, not including tier two boots. Why is Mord getting to push for free right now? He's completely out of position. I'll attack Q, hit him with the R right as he's coming out of the stun. His R got cancelled because he lost vision over, but it's, it's not on cooldown. Got him with an ignite. Kite him out with my passive. Poppy's a huge kite monster since she's fast with her items in W. They're tanking Ocean Drag right now, which isn't the best thing to be tanking. Since it slows you. Yeah, this guy needs to die. We'll go ahead and reset. Our passive is giving us so much shield in these fights that uh, doesn't seem like they're really able to kill me. Seems like they're going to have a lot of issues with that. How much is our passive doing? Oh, 626 shield. Holy crap. That's a lot. That is so much. All we need to do is just play front line. Don't chase too far. We need to make sure we're able to block stuff for our carries. You never want to go too deep as a tank. Unless you can instantly one-shot someone on the enemy team. But even then, if you have a big backline R champion like MF, even if you can one-shot someone on the enemy team as a tank, it's usually best to just pill for AD carry. Because their R can kill the whole enemy team. Hey, Victor. We got his R. We didn't really lose that much from it either. Oh, it gave that? I'm actually really surprised that it counted that Swain Eye. I guess I was just barely inside of it. it sucks. Had to end up burning my flash. We got a reset. Oh, we'll have a self corruption at this point. It's worth it though for extra movement speed from winged moon plate. Super, super strong. I'll show you guys what we're moving at passively now. Just walking around. We are moving at 426. Pretty fast. Pretty dang quick. I'm going to run past that, get some pressure on it. Victor R may still be on cooldown. Doesn't seem like they actually want to turn to fight me. 
Ooh. I feel like we're gonna get hung out to dry here. Teammates are pushing mid. We get down a Q. I guess we run this way. Oh, that landed. Shoot. That is rough. I don't know if I can actually get out here. Yeah, that's rough. That's a little bit rough. Vigo goes inside a mord, he dies. That's really tough to get away from all that. It is what it is though. Really need MF in these fights. She's making the team suffer immensely. She'll be in the general area, but just not move. She wants to split push, but it's incredibly selfish. She can't solo more. She can't solo Shaco. She can't solo Victor. So she's putting the team in a situation where she's like, oh, I just split push. And it's like, if we do let her do that, she'll die and we lose the game. So what she's really doing is forcing us to group on where she's at, even if it's the wrong move. It's silly. But that's what we got to do. We got to go straight to her or we're going to lose. We can't team fight 4v5 when our most one of our most important team fight characters is choosing a split push when many people in the enemy team can solo them she doesn't have much survivability arcane comet you shield bow it's pretty pretty killable she's fast out of combat but once she takes damage she loses that movement speed Gonna wait for drag fights. Told him ultimately we should win these fights if MF presses R. And I guess she's just gonna split push as drag comes up. All right, then that's what we gotta commit to. Now she decides she's gonna back. Maybe she does want a drag fight. I don't know. I'll just kill Mord. My grass should win me this. If I kite it, he goes for Kata, he knows. Probably can't kill me. QR, we need to hold this guy still. He's slowing the crap out of me. Jeez, Katarina. Got him with Ignite, we'll pick up the little shield. Yep. Thornmail's starting to pay some dividends with his Omnivamp pilling from. Uh, Rift Maker and Conquer. My teammates are gonna have to fight that 3v4. It is what it is. I can't get there in time. They have a chance definitely with MF. So uh, yeah, looks like the enemies were tanking Dragon as well. Ocean Dragon, the hardest Dragon to tank in the game since it's autos heavily slow you. It's extremely dangerous to start when the enemy team's nearby. Kids can't get away from it quickly enough. We'll sit here on the split since once again, that's too far away. We can't really get over there. Backing up a lot of golden XP. Victor resets for top. I need to leave. I don't know where Shaco is. I'm gonna keep running for a bit. Till my R is about to be up right about there. It's fine. Go ahead and leave one right there. Baron is the next objective. We'll go ahead and get, it's a really, really tough call. Really, really tough. I'd say Sterics, honestly. I'd say Sterics because they have so much mixed damage that uh, I feel like putting one more armor, one more armor, one more magic resist item wouldn't do what we needed to do so instead just having more hp and damage would be better so warmogs would be fine here sterics would be fine any kind of hp item really titanic would be okay we need to clear vision force them to come fight us on baron i know i can't kill her i just want their team to move over here 
She doesn't have sword, so that's not gonna do anything to me. Give me that grasp, Swain. Thank you very much. That's awkward. It's Ard the Karma. I'm gonna eat this guy into the wall. Auto attack Q into R. Down he goes. Looks like Karma died. That's fine by me. We're gonna have to E out. Taking a lot of damage from these buttholes. Victor's pretty fast. He also does loads of damage, so. Gotta respect that a little bit. I don't think this is worded. Oh, it definitely is worded. What? I would have followed that up with flash E. He didn't want to though, I'm fine with that. <laughs> we might have all ended up dying if we did. Victor's so freaking strong. 300 CS. All right, we've, we've been dropping a lot of CS. We haven't farmed in a while. At least meaningfully farmed. MF really needed that when she's full build. <laughs> Staking the cannon minion. What a turd burglar. We'll tank the Baron, get the big shields, drop constant Qs. It's going down pretty quick. Team wants to back off. I'm missing a huge chunk of health. I don't know if this is the right play. We do have a really low cooldown shield, but still. Auto attack Q, we got ignite on this guy. We got my buckler. Go ahead and R this guy inside the MFR, down he goes. We're gonna flash Q him auto, down he goes. We didn't pill for our back line, just cause MF had a really good R, we needed to slow and CC them inside of it. So in that, in that, in that sense, since we had already set up the fight off the Mord pick, their team wasn't positioned to punish MFR. Did what we needed to do. I think we end here. There's a long time before they spawn. Poppy is just stupid tanky. Like, she, what is she gonna do? Auto me to death? She can't. There's no way. That's GG's. We'll take a look at the graphs. I have a feeling we are top three most damage dealt, and we are definitely most damage taken. Really happy with this build. I can see why it has the win rate that it does. Let's take a look at the graphs. Looking at damage dealt to enemy champions, we were in fact the second highest in the game. We did even more damage than Victor, which is freaking nuts because he was stupid fed and had so much CS and gold. Looking at damage taken, we had taken the most in the game or technically more, not technically, but damage taken, he took the most just barely by a couple hundred. But if you look at self mitigated, so we both took around 41,000. We self-mitigated 98,000 damage. That's through your armor, your magic resist, and our shields from our passive on top of that. So we more than doubled his self-mitigated. The difference is 50, we'll just call it 53,000 differential there. So damage taken, we took more than double anyone else's very easily. So technically we took the most by more than double anyone else. For runes, super, super, super high value. I can see why this build is around a 77% win rate. If you guys enjoyed, don't forget to like, leave a comment and subscribe. My name is Kingsticks. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.